Hello again, you guys. Welcome back. It is Comic Kid here again. It is Friday night. I'm a little bit turned, and I just found the Green Lantern John Stewart from McFarlane Toys. Now, I am super excited to show this guy off here today. Uh, I've been looking for him for a hot minute now, and he hasn't been out too terribly long, but I am super excited to have him now, and I've just been waiting on the Bizarro figure, and that's really the only other two that I want from this wave. Uh, he also comes with the Death of the Family Nightwing, and like an unmasked uh, Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman. But this is really one of the two that I was interested in, and boy does he look sleek. We'll get into that in a second, but even in the package for such a simple pose, I love that they have him actually wearing the shield. I think it really kind of stands out as to what McFarlane can do in terms of accessories. And I think everything he comes with just screams Green Lantern. This is technically McFarlane's first Green Lantern figure, unless you count the Dawnbreaker, which is more of a Batman figure to some. But, I mean, that's really just dependent on kind of how you look at things. But I've always loved Jon Stewart as a character. He and Kyle Rayner have been, like, my favorites. I never just really cared for Hal Jordan and especially Guy Gardner, <laughs> which I know most people don't. But, you know, you love to hate him. So to cover some of the basics, you know you have all your standard stuff from McFarlane as far as the packaging goes, and so there's really nothing too special about it there. So we will go ahead, crack this guy open, and look at some of the details for him. Alrighty, you guys, here he is out of the box and in all his glory. Now, I am just in absolute awe of this figure. I honestly think this might be one of the best that McFarlane has done so far. And though Jon Stewart may not be one of my favorite characters, this figure just has some incredible, just incredible detail. And I am just super, super excited that he'll be on my shelf. Now, as always, we gotta start with the accessories. Of course you come with the base stand there, just the one with the usual DC logo. And then you have the flagship McFarlane trading card here as well. And so that's it as far as like the standard ones. Now we all know McFarlane loves his characters with big guns and that weapons and capes are kind of his bread and butter. But man, this Gatling gun that he did is just exceptional. And just like, look at the detail on this thing. I don't know if McFarlane watches any of my videos. I highly doubt he would, but like, man, that is just a phenomenal piece of artwork right there. I love everything about that. And then of course you have the battery pack that kind of plugs into the hole on the back of his chest. And what's interesting about this is that this plug right here, uh, you can have him without the chest piece shield, which I don't know why you would, but regardless, both of them have a hole, which makes fitting this piece just that much easier. And like with the gun, it's just a very detailed piece. And despite the fact that it's, you know, just a giant green, kind of block, it's just really, really well done all around. And so I think McFarlane deserves a lot of credit in regard to that. And then last but not least, we do have the chest piece shield. Now I did remove the head of this figure after I got him out of the box for the sake of showing it off a little bit closer. It is a bit more flimsy, a piece of plastic, like that's pretty easy to maneuver. Uh, especially in comparison to the others, but I mean you kind of want that given that there will be some added movement for the figure. And I love the symbols off to the side there. Absolutely phenomenal and just incredible detailing all around. So well done McFarlane Toys in that regard. Now of course to get into the figure himself and like I mentioned earlier, Jon Stewart isn't exactly one of my all-time favorite characters, despite the fact that I do 
like him as a character. But all in all, I feel as though McFarlane just crushed it and like, look at this head sculpt. Like that is just some absolutely stunning, like I am appalled that this is a piece of plastic. That is just absolutely amazing. And very John Stewart. I love the short buzzed hair. Uh, it definitely gives off the vibes of Rebirth and stuff like that. And the face sculpt alone is enough to sell me on this figure. But we'll go ahead and start with the boots as well. And you'll kind of see that the grooves and ridges and all that are really, really nice. I love the detailing as you get up to the thighs and whatnot. And then the ab piece, I love how naturally it just kind of sits and rests into the kind of typical arrow of comic book characters. But even down at the belt right there with those ridges, I'm like, man, that is just incredible. I love the gauntlets and all that, everything just really feels like it's a practical suit, not just a suit of armor. And this was always one of the biggest complaints about the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. This has some great practical elements to it that also give it a realistic and yet not too stiff or rigid sort of appearance as well. There's the back of the figure, there's that peg that fits the battery pack, and even on the back, like kind of by the arms up here, you just have some wonderful, wonderful detailing and line work, and just everything about this figure just amazes me, including that ass. Look at that ass, though. Now, of course, we gotta talk about articulation as well. And as far as the articulation goes, he does come with all the standard McFarlane joints as well. You have the toes that go up. You have the ball joint ankles. This one's actually a little like more limited than I think we're used to seeing from McFarlane, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm not sure why that is. You still get a good bend in that joint there, but oh well. And then, of course, you have the double jointed knees that get you some pretty good range. You come back down, you have a really, really solid leg joint right there. Like that goes out to just almost, a, uh, that's probably a perfect 90 degree angle there. Look at that. Love that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that piece is a little loose, so you do get a little bit of give with the ab crunch there. And you can kind of really see it when you pull it back, but still some really solid movement. You do have some ball wrists as well. Pull that out. They're a little bit hindered if you pull them this way just because of that piece there, but it's still pretty solid. Uh, you have some twisty shoulders and an extra bit of motion there. You have your double jointed elbows that everyone knows and loves. You got some great swivel shoulders and a butterfly joint up there as well, so. And I think the sleeker design of this suit and just the sculpt actually give it a little bit extra edge. And then lastly, the head was a little bit difficult to pop off and put back on as well, but I mean, you do get some pretty solid up and down motion from it. And so all around, I honestly feel as though this is one of the strongest pieces McFarlane has yet to do. And for comparison, I do have the DC Essentials one here, which is from the New 52 era specifically, but obviously based on Jon Stewart as well. Now, despite the differences between these two, I actually do like and dislike certain elements about both of them. With the DC Essentials one, I really like the kind of glossy shine to him, as well as the more clothy look. 
Uh, it just screams that it's a bit more of a traditional interpretation of Green Lantern, while McFarlane's is, you know, definitely a bit more modern. You get the armored pieces, and so there is that as well. Despite the fact that McFarlane does feel a little bit more practical, I do like some of the classical elements in the more clothy approach to the DC Essentials one. Uh, likewise, the DC Essentials one also decided to go with the all green eyes, which is kind of common depending on, you know, who's writing or illustrating or inking and stuff like that. But oftentimes, a Green Lantern's eyes will glow green. And with the DC Essentials one, they just decided to paint his eyes just completely and totally green. And so I do like that McFarlane went for the more humanistic Jon Stewart version and so yeah aside from that really the biggest difference and whatnot is the fact that you can actually see his hands now over the years you know green lantern has obviously had several different looks but even in the card that the mcfarlane one comes with uh, john stewart is not wearing any gloves and so i do think that's really kind of a personal preference thing i don't really care but it is a significant difference and I figured I'd point it out. And then obviously, you know, you have the height differences and stuff like that, but uh, that's not a huge deal unless you want them to scale, but we know how McFarlane's DC Multiverse line has been scaling ever since it came out, and so there aren't really any surprises in terms of this Jon Stewart's height. But uh, yeah, that is about everything that I have for you guys today. Thank y'all so much for watching. As always, be sure to stick around for some extra photos at the end. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again real soon.